I'm something of a creature of whims, and early the other morning as I was feeding my dogs, I was suddenly struck by a bizarre and intense desire to recreate Van Gogh's Starry Night on a birthday cake. So I'm going to do just that. I'm not a professional baker or cake decorator, I'm just a painter, but I like to dabble in other creative fields. I just can't seem to stay in my lane. Anyway, I decided to cut to the chase and use a box mix because I already had it, I'm impatient, and I just wanted to get to the frosting part already. This is a devil's food cake, which I thought would be appropriate. I let the cake cool overnight. I then mixed up a basic buttercream frosting. Buttercream is not my favorite, so this is just for a thin crumb coat. I'm not a pro, but I've frosted enough cakes to know that prepping the cake with a crumb coat is going to save me untold frustration later. It's kind of analogous to priming a canvas with gesso before painting. The final frosting application is just going to go on so much smoother. And I did not level off the top, I'm just going to keep the natural texture of the cake. I let that dry and set in the fridge, and then I mixed up my main frosting. For this, I opted for a cream cheese frosting, which I personally think tastes better than buttercream. There's nothing as disappointing to me as a beautiful cake that tastes awful. And what I like about cream cheese is that it's not overpoweringly sweet. This recipe is also a little softer and creamier, and the texture reminds me a little of an oil paint, which is what I'm going for. After that, I began mixing smaller batches with the gel food coloring. Since Starry Night is a rather dark painting, I bought a set of dark food coloring, which included black, dark blue, and brown. Right away, I realized that I was not going to be able to match the blues accurately, which was incredibly disappointing. What makes this painting special to me, and the reason why I think it resonates with so many people, is Van Gogh's use of complementary colors. His palette included cobalt blue and ultramarine blue, which is a really intense reddish blue. For the yellows, he used Indian yellow and zinc yellow, and that particular color combination has a really special resonance to it. The blues in my food coloring set, however, are more of an electric greenish blue, much closer to thalo blue than ultramarine blue. It's kind of a loud color that really slaps you in the face. I did try to correct this with some red coloring, but that ended up shifting the frosting to gray. So I resigned myself to the fact that the blues weren't going to match exactly. Van Gogh was known for his thick applications of paint. In fact, some of his paintings that he created in the field have bits of grass, bugs, and other debris that became trapped in the thick paint layers. So I thought that frosting especially would be great for recreating that texture. If you search on YouTube, you can find videos of the manufacturing process of oil paints, and you'll see it looks strikingly like bakery frosting. Van Gogh allegedly attempted to eat oil paint and drink turpentine during some of his more serious episodes of mental illness. 
Interestingly, it's actually not the linseed oil itself that would have been dangerous. Linseed oil comes from the flax plant, which is edible. The dangerous part of oil paint would have been the pigments, like lead and zinc, and the paint thinners in the paint, like turpentine. If he did indeed consume paint, this likely would have exacerbated his mental health issues. So for the record, don't eat paint or drink turpentine. Cake and frosting are much tastier. This particular style of painting I find much more difficult to pull off than realism. I really admire the work of the Impressionists and the Expressionists like Van Gogh, but it's really hard to get it right. So working on this was kind of a humbling experience for me. I kind of threw everything I had at this, trying to mimic the painting as best I could. So I used an offset spatula, a butter knife, a spoon, even little toothpicks for the little stars. The process I used was a lot like knife painting. I guess a professional would probably use pastry bags for this, but it felt more natural for me to try to paint with the frosting. So I'm sure this looks maybe a little bizarre to those of you who are skilled at professional frosting techniques. The entire frosting process took me almost two hours, which is similar to the amount of time I would invest in a small painting. At that point, the frosting was becoming hard and difficult to work with, and I decided it was time to call it quits. I knew from the outset that I wouldn't be able to create an exact replica. Because I'm limited to food safe dyes, the colors don't quite match, and also the aspect ratio of the cake was not the same as the painting. But I do think I captured the spirit of the painting. At the very least, it bears an unmistakable resemblance to the painting, which is what I was going for. I do hope this video isn't taken as being gimmicky. That wasn't my intent. I take art pretty seriously and I have a great deal of respect for Van Gogh's art. So I hope that comes across, if nothing else. Anyway, that was the process behind the creation of this cake. I had a lot of fun with this and I hope that maybe you enjoyed it too. If so, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!